Okay, all good. So, uh, good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, today's webinar organized by Gamji Educational and Mentorship Forum. So, we welcome you once again. And our topic today, or the title of our webinar today, is uh, uh, From Idea to Publication. That is a complete guide on how to publish your uh, academic uh, uh, research. So uh, as a student or as a researcher, we all know uh, how important research publication is and how important even uh, research is to, to our today's uh, world. So that's why we gather an excellent researchers today so that we can break uh, this down. And like I mentioned in one of my first, uh, mainly uh, some of the reasons why we organize this webinar is uh, Recently, Gamji Educational and Mentorship Forum has been uh, uh, getting a slot for uh, various scholarship opportunities. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, uh, most of the professors that contact us that they want to recommend students, they mention that they at least need a student with a, a publication in an SCIO uh, Scopus Index Journal. But unfortunately, so many of the students that we have received their academic CV uh, couldn't get that uh, 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 minimum requirement. So we think, okay, there is really high chance or uh, it's highly important to organize this webinar in order to uh, highlight our student uh, how to publish a quality research so that they can uh, have a chance to secure uh, several scholarship or competitive scholarship around the, the world. So without much wasting our time i would like to break down the schedule of our webinar then we'll get into uh business so first we will hear a a, a talk uh from uh dr abba ramadan and then we will uh, see or we'll uh, uh, have a presentation by each of our presenters uh, based on their specific uh, uh, discipline on how to develop a research idea and then how to write the research paper then later on we are going to have a, a talk on selecting a journal that is after you write your manuscript how can you select the journal and that talk is going to be presented by dr muhammad chutiami and then we will go to submission and peer review process which will be discussed by dr ibrahim aliu and lastly we are going to see what are the post publication considerations uh, which is going to be addressed by Dr. Abdul Adir Maiguru. Then we'll have a question and answers, and then that's all. And I think by if you can be able to go through this, I think we are going to really uh, cover a publication, let's say from A to Z. And I'm sure uh, we that are here today, we are going to learn a lot, even if we have a basic knowledge of how to publish your research. Um, I think our researchers will equip us with a, uh, uh, a knowledge that we can be able to publish our own uh, research. So without uh, wasting much of our time, I would like to, before we go into this, I would like to invite Dr. Abba Ramadan. Uh, I will give you like five minutes to talk about like why research publication is important in academic and why is, is it important for students, uh, especially students looking for scholarship opportunities. So, I would like you, Doctor, in five minutes to highlight the importance of research publication in academia. All right. Um, so, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, I would like to thank Gamji for this uh, wonderful opportunity to educate ourselves first and foremost, and also to educate our um, fellow mentees that are trying to secure uh, uh, scholarships uh, especially in outside outside nigeria and even some local scholarship that are within nigeria but you can study some of them are getting very competitive that um this is just the standard cv the standard uh, statement of purpose is it's not enough so um let me begin by it's highlighting so overall the importance of research and publication in academia so, so there are there are many importance uh, uh, but uh, to be more specific 
first of all, I think from my own point of view is advancing knowledge, right? So the main point of research is to advance knowledge. I mean, if if you go back all the way to history, uh, and it depends on how far you want to go back, uh, but I, I, I can just say right during the golden age of the Islamic era, or, or even beyond, you will see that uh, most of the things we, we, we are enjoying today, the basics, are all from research and everything that we are having today also is due to the continuous research now some research are very the application are very eminent like you make the research maybe this year in two or three years you see the application what are some areas you do the research um this a year and then maybe after 100 or 1000 years the application will be or some have might have not have even an application but it is a continuous documentation of knowledge right let's say if i'm curious about something and then they go and research about it and publish it then somebody can just read it instead of them repeating the same research over and over again so that is advancing knowledge is one one of the key important of research in academic and then also, there is academic reputation. So if I publish 10 papers, 15 papers, 20 papers, a thousand papers, and if they are all as Dr. highlighted, um, you know, in this SI scope, index or in the highly or top rank journals because there's something to just write something and put it online or put it on the archive and there's another thing which is to actually do a good job i see i'm running out of time okay so the next thing is career academic uh advancement right so if you do research it will advance your career and then there is collaboration and networking uh because in doing the research sometimes you have to do the research with somebody else and securing funding right so this is for overall general research but in particular to our men, men mentees uh, this actually demonstrate academic commitment that okay even at your level of masters or even undergraduate you have a publication that shows really you have you are you are very committed to to, to this uh, academic uh, excellence and then it also highlights your skills that you know already how to do research. By the way, even here in the state, I'm sure Chuchami and other people will talk about other places. At any stage, having an academic paper really distinguishes you from your mates. Right? So if you have a very good one or two papers, very good and very not even not very top, but top or close to that journals, you really stand out in your application and you catch the eyes of the professors. And also this in general, build your academic profile and also some some funding, right? They, they have a prerequisite. And I think that is one of the motivation of this sem uh, seminar. They have prerequisite that we expect one or two papers. So if you have a paper, uh, then, 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 then they have like say, some have like funding from the government or something like that. That they you will use that. That is part of the criteria to, to give you the funding. So without any publication, you you might not be considered for for the scholarship. So this is overall in five minutes. I think uh, some things I will highlight. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, wonderful! Thank you very much. Uh, uh doctor for highlighting the the significance of uh, research publication i'm sure like some of the students have already grabbed why they should really uh, try to start preparing for their uh, research and publish it so let's dive into the business so uh, like i mentioned before now we are going to enter the first session in which each presenter is going to talk specifically on his subject or on his discipline like you, you have shown you have seen in the in the poster uh, we have computer science which is going to be uh, presented by dr ibrahim aliu and uh, he's going to be our first uh, presenter which uh, he's going to talk about how to develop a research idea and then what how to identify even a knowledge gap 
in that research domain and then how to uh, write the manuscript what are the structure of the manuscript how to write it and then from there then we can we can go on but before dr ibrahim start i would like to introduce him uh, dr ibrahim is uh, currently a researcher at intelligent innovation g5 aict research center at Chanam national university uh, uh, south korea but before he was a postdoctoral researcher at the same uh, university uh, he received his uh, bachelor and master's in engineering in computer engineering from federal university of technology mina nigeria and he did his phd in computer science and engineering from Chonnam national university uh, on the global career scholarship in seoul south korea so his expertise in uh, in artificial intelligence and machine learning for networking digital twin network and his current research area is uh, resource allocation and living problem for metaverse application in quantum distribution and mobile computation uploading so uh uh, Dr. Ibrahim has published various articles in reputable journals. He has more than 400 citations uh, in Google Scholar. And Dr. Ibrahim, through his uh, his collaboration in, in the lab, actually has uh, uh, has uh, helped us to secure a couple of uh, PhD position and master's position in his lab, which we are very uh, grateful, Dr. And I would like to say Dr. is the one that uh, received me when I came to Korea, I knew nothing about Korea. Dr. was the one that received me and showed me around and still he's showing us around. So thank you very much, Dr. for joining us today and uh, the floor is yours. Dr. you have to unmute your mic. Assalamu uh, alaikum, hello everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, as, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Aliu. So uh, I shall take you through as he highlighted. Uh, so let's begin. So uh, Dr. Ramadan has really explained why we do research and other things. So in in nutshell, we do research to to satisfy our curiosity or to find some answers. And this, so how do we create this curiosity and translate this curiosity into research question, into manuscript, and so on? So, and and Alvin Einstein was asked, and he mentioned that I have no special talent; I am only passionately curious. So the question now is, how do you generate this curiosity? How do you translate it into research, and how do you uh, into questions and answer the questions and make sure this key, your curiosity can benefit what uh, the general populace. So in, 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 in light of that, I will try to give you some basic about the research methods, paper, how a paper structure is, and then some areas in computer science. Then I will give you a hands-on, or I can say a practical explanation on how I was able to generate an idea. But note that this, everyone has his own ways of getting it and so on. And then I shall take you through a little bit about conducting the research. So the goal of the presentation is actually not to bring the areas and it's just to tell you how you conceive, how you think, everyone gives the idea, right? But how do you go about it and how, so the, process, the, the presentation is basically to guide you through that. So uh, first of all, we begin with what is a research? Research consists of two words, re and search. Re means again, and then search me could mean examining carefully so we examine carefully again so in a nutshell it is defined by redmond as a systematic effort to gain new knowledge it can also be defined as a care careful inquiry or examination and seeking facts or principle or a diligent an intelligent investigation to ascertain certain things mm -hmm. so, sorry doctor mm -hmm. uh, someone is saying they cannot see the screen so i'm not sure either from his side is someone confirm if you can see the screen of oh. no, no we can see we can see okay 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 thank you thank you okay but go ahead then oh, okay so so based on this uh after spending time energy and money what do you do 
how do you what uh, what do you do with all this? And you know, emo, your research is emotionally engaged, and at some point you will want to share what you have done. So the best thing is, or what you have to do is uh, an uh, is an article. So you write article to give out this year fun uh, this year uh, research that you have done. And as he rightly mentioned, uh, Doctor Ramadan, that the adage that publish or perish still exist so we have to in one way or the other needs to publish for a career growth and other things so the basic method we've learned this in basic science in primary school secondary school first is observation and then an hypothesis is uh, synthesized then you predict or you career analysis and so then you test it the new observation it confirm the old one then i'll propose a new one and then select among the computing theories. But the question is, what is this observation? Does it mean you do like uh, Axie Newton that just sit down in the and observe the leaves falling and then discover the Newton laws and so on? What do you need to do at this in this hour age? The key thing here is literature review. How do you search your literature review? This is where you make the observation. You read from articles you have to read. So then every other thing fall in place as we will get to know. So the objective of research, research as we as you conduct research, you find yourself doing one of or more of this, exploring, describing, diagnosing, the diagnosing and then forming, uh, testing hypothesis. So sometimes uh, as you conduct research, you you just, it's the line between those keep uh, getting diminished, but this is what you find yourself doing. Uh, there are different types of research in theory, uh, uh one it can like for instance description of research uh, descriptive research uh analytical research down to conceptual and experimental it depends on your field it depends on the question you are trying to answer and you do not have to know this definition offhand before you be a good researcher the question guides you through exactly what you will find yourself doing along the way so that's the key thing you need to know so the processes First of all, you need to identify gap in knowledge. How do you identify this gap? By reading or conducting literature review. So uh, it, although uh, you find yourself doing literature review almost all through these steps from problem formulation and it, the literature review itself, uh, problem formulation, research design, data collection and analysis, you keep on reading papers in the domain you are, you find out how they write the literature reviews, what are the recent works on that, then what are the research problems, how do you know them, no one knows without reading, you know, you have to read and read, then you understand, researchers will tell you the problem currently existing, then from there you formulate the problem, then how do you formulate the questions, you get it also from these papers, you have to be attentive to the style, to the message and everything, so it is really time consuming, you have to involve uh you have to be concentrate a lot to drive that and then if it involves data collection or modeling analysis and so on and then you conclude your research by establishing a major findings but if you can if what you need to remember in this point is which research uh literature review is the heart of the research at its conception until conclusion so you need to really keep this in mind so paper how does it look like? A, a paper has a title, an abstract, an introduction, a section describing existing works, and then based on the existing works, you formulate question, right? So these questions now you need to tell people how the method you follow to get these questions or the kind of modeling you, you do that. We put those in methodology or methods, and then we describe the result we obtain after answering those. And then what does your result tells you? What is the significance? What what have you established newly or confirmed if it does what you set out to do? Then you need to reference. So these are the basic structures. So mind you, a paper can, a literature review can have subheadings or someone can decide to call it background. Someone can decide to name it under his literature review just the issue or the problem. So, but as you read, no matter how this is, you will find these entities around the paper. So you need to pay attention uh, don't be distracted by how it is coined, even if it is not written as I listen. So a title, a title should reflect your main idea. It should use the appropriate word and be concise. 
So this is really theory. So how do you get these ideas? How do you know that it is reflecting main ideas? By going back to the literature in what you are doing and looking at exactly how they form their title, how they form the issues and how the keywords are. And it shouldn't be long, right? So you literature review helps you to drive all this. And then the abstract. The abstract contains a brief summary, a background on what you are doing. In this background, we are describing the real problem you are trying to solve, and then we describe a little bit of the methods, a summary. Just you can, uh, my professors in Nigeria then used to say, you write these four parts and then collapse them into one and then make them concise. So you could have one sentence or two describing the background, or maybe three with problem statement, then you have one or two sentences talking about the methods you did and then the results you obtain and what is the significance of your results. So it has to be concise. The abstract is normally written last after you've conducted everything. But uh, since most of you are applicants, uh, you may not need to conduct research before you write an abstract. Uh, you, you may, in the template given to summarize your research uh, proposal, but in the research proposal, you just it's anticipated, it is expected. This is the only language that changes from what uh, for, from a research that has already been conducted. So, but it will have similar stuff. So these are some of the, my favorite researchers. I feel uh, I have, there is one of their article uh, they wrote, I want to cite them as an example. So look at this abstract now. The first line says edge computing is expected to provide low latency access to computing and so on. And then pricing and resource allocation thus have to uh, cope with stochastic workload. On the other hand, offering resources at price that is attractive to, to that as well as devices. And on the other hand, ensuring revenue to the edge. So you could see now they've introduced it, they give you the problem. Uh, they, you have to balance these two. And then they said in this paper, we formulated a, a strategic interaction between an edge operator and a well edge device as a Bayesian Stackelbeck Markov game. So they told you what they did. So they characterized and so on down. And then they said the proposed approximation leverages so and so. And then our extensive simulation results demonstrate. You can see those items I mentioned, very concise. And this, this is what you expected, how, how you are expected to. I found them very interesting because they are really simple. When you read uh, Professor Gurgi's uh, article, most of the time you find them writing in this style and it's easy to follow. So, and then next, and then we look at the introduction. So an introduction consists of current state of knowledge, gap in knowledge and objectives of your research. It can have other elements or the, uh, group of elements among what is listed. But uh, uh, let me cite also an example here. You can see his first paragraph, he introduced it. Second, he mentioned that this addressing these challenges require efficient resource management. And then they confirm in literature what exists. In the other paragraph, he says, if we are to solve this problem, that is the alternative approach is to formulate the problem as sequential, where this and so on. Hence, how to provide efficient solution for pricing is an open problem. So he is establishing the gap here. And then he moves on to say in this, uh, they move on to say in this work, we address the problem, they describe it again, and then what they find out. So this is a, a, an issue. Uh, you could see I mentioned, I put an arrow back to introduction. So some introduction, uh, you find people putting their related works there. So it can be inserted there, but uh, it could be longer. It depends on the style. There is no perfect style. It depends on what you find appealing and how your work, uh, maybe the nature of the work you are doing. So in our domain, sometimes related works are found in the introduction. Uh, but the key thing is your introduction should really emphasize on the problem you are solving, what exists, and why your work is relevant. And then you describe a little bit of what you did in the work to address that problem. You should have that. So related works. Related works is a, you can have it as a subsection after introduction or you can put it there. But in the introduction, you must make clear, critically clear, like state uh, crystal clear that uh, this is the gap and this is what you are solving. There in related works, you make comprehensive analysis. You, you describe, you can discuss about the theory and background and then the gap in knowledge. So that means you summarize what people do and then say, 
Sometimes you say the positive of what they did, but the negative, the positive of what they do and the demerits of what they did. And then you now establish a gap that based on this, something is lacking. That is the essence. It's not just reporting people's work, but what is the work saying? What has the what is the gap in 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 in, in, in those works that warrants your study? So you have to convince the uh, the, the the reviewers that your work is relevant. So here is an example. Also, I put an arrow backward. In our domain, some people feel to put the related works after results. So in the form of, in your discussion section, they put it there. So why do they do that? Because they felt, some people feel like the related works is about uh, critical analysis, comparing your work and uh, your work and their work. So after your result is established, you can still do that. But you can see what they did here. For his style, you know, sometimes he, most of the time he put it after results. So, but you could see that they said the joint optimization of edge computing and communication and pricing have been considered in a handful of study. They summarize it. Towards the end of the first paragraph, you see the difference from this work and our solution infers that uh, infers our solution infers the dynamic of the traffic without assuming complete information. You could see one statement that established exactly what they did. So when people read your related works, this is what they want to see. Uh, these are really top scientists. You see, they do not need to write many pages. They do not need to have like 50 relevant work, but they took the works that are relevant and they summarized. And you could see a sentence that clearly shows how their theirs differs. And then they move on to the last paragraph. They say most related works uh, related to our works, uh, most related to our ours are uh, recent works that consider pricing under dynamic workflow. But this work are different from our work in two important ways. First, you could see they explain, then they move to. So this is why I really like them. You could check their works. They are really clear. So if you write your uh, paper in this way, it's even easier. You are also aware of what you are doing. So then methods. What did you do? How did you do it? How did you collect the data? What are the techniques? This is what is expected. So. And then uh, in the results and discussion, you 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 describe your results after uh, based on what you did and so on, and then what did you obtain? Then you describe it there. So you should pay attention to significance and contribution, strength and uh, limitations. So that's why some people move these related works down there. Even if you put it up there, in discussion of result, you have to bring them back there and be comparing them that this guy used uh, let's say five users when he set up his scenario. Uh, but when you where his uh, based on his results, when you scale to twenty or by factor of ten, the result, uh, the performance uh, depreciates or so on. But ours is scalable. Why? Because beyond a certain number, we can see that uh, our algorithm maintains same performance. So they expect to see this analysis. Sometimes they they will tell you, oh, your result discussion has no depth. What do they mean? You do not analyze your result against uh, existing works and you do not try to drive conclusion from there. So uh, that's why some put it there. So this is an example of uh, fr from that paper, you can see they have, so in this methodology, domain wise, even within computer science, based on the problem you are solving, it can differ, but you, you split it based on the need. So that's why you, how do you split it? This is the question, this is why we are here. So this answer is found back into the papers, existing works in that domain. You just, you always have to keep them. You have to check the problem. You have to find the writing style. You have to find how they structure their papers. Sometimes if you go outside of what this community understands, they will likely reject it. They will say it's not in order or something because it's a community. There is a way they communicate. How do you find out? You have to read the paper. You have to check it out. You have to compare and see which one suits your style. This is exactly what we do most of the time. It's not that you are writing papers. Sometimes you immediately know. We are always learning. Sometimes you have to rely on 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 those existing works. So this is how you can find it. Then conclusion, you recap. In conclusion, we are expect uh, you are expected to recap your main findings. Bring significance 
uh, and contribution and overall state of knowledge and future advancement. So what I want to make clear here is some people in conclusion summarize. They summarize their work and then you send it out to top journals. They said, this is not a conclusion, this is summary. Why? Because you simply, you simply rec recap what you have done instead of main findings. You get it. So main findings in this sense is after you, you will have a sentence like one or two describing what you have done, but what you obtain from it, that this is the main result you find out and this is the main contribution. And then overall, you have to make a conclusion based on what you have found out. And then don't forget, you have to give future research advancements. Uh, you will always be asked for this. So in the last sentence, that's expected. So you can see the, an example from them. They say, we have considered joint optimization of pricing and computing and communicate, communication resource allocation for tax offloading in edge computing under dynamic workload. We showed that the, result, uh, result, the resulting sequential decision-making problem can be modeled as uh, uh, an MDP. And we propose a sample efficient model based on reinforcement learning uh, algorithm based on uh, a, a novel approximation. You can see they are making conclusions. We used this simulation to show that our proposed uh, approach can learn a good policy, several orders of magnitude faster than the model free. You can see they are making conclusions. They are their main findings. This is what their work find out. Interesting direction of future work include, you can see they are now given. If you write anything outside this, the community, or the research community or whoever is reviewing you, uh, your work will find out that you're not following what is expected. So sometimes when we receive review, this is what we check. Like you just, it's the system. You have to understand how the system works. You have to check the existing work and the kind of journal you want to publish in. How do they write their stuff? How do they discuss their results and so on? So your power is really on the quality of the related works and uh, you, you carry down. So, now references. References, uh, someone will discuss more of that, but reference all sources. That is what is expected. And then it will have to be transparent and accurate. That is each journal, oh, there are different references style and each journal has their own style. You have to follow that. And uh, your paper may not be published because you simply do not put the right references. It will be returned to you until you fix it. So always be aware of their references style set it out before you you do that so now we've seen a basic uh, approach on, on the paper okay uh, go through then you have to okay the time has already like passed, okay so. all right so here now i will just take you through the journey a little bit so some uh, research areas in computer science a simple google googling of this hot research topic gives me this so uh, which area you want to go Sometimes you have to talk to your advisors in the school and so on, but we know there is AI, there is data science, computer vision, and so on. So there are so many areas you can find out that in the internet. But what I'm interested in is, is in the scientific methods we carried out this research. So we have theoretical, we have experimental, and computer simulation. This is what we do mostly in, in the domain. You can find in the reference there. So. The, one of the methodologies I think I found interesting is that of Professor Frank Finzek. Uh, yeah, he, he, this, their method is about the theory that matters. This is really what confused most of beginners. You read a lot of theory and then you want to translate it into research and then you have so much disjoint. So the key thing is focus on the theory that matters to that work. How do you, now the question is how do you get this theory that matters? So you have to Again, download papers in that domain, investigate the methods and they are talking about, then collect these methods and go back and recheck them. So I think that's a, a, an easier way rather than just studying so much theory without knowing which one is relevant. So theory and implementation is very important. Theory can help you in writing proposal, but during interview, you might be asked implementation questions. So be mindful of that. I will show you some examples. So in this, I want to explain a little bit AI for 5G and beyond. So look at 5G, we say internet of everything over 150 
75 million uh, our mobile operators have adopted 5g then we are moving to 6g so but 6g basically entails 5g plus ai that is focusing on how we use extend ai uh, and ml benefit in wireless networks this is what 6g is all about now it's about improving the throughput and so on and improving like uh throughput and, and so on as i mentioned so here is like the timeline we have 3g 4g and then 5g is basically ai in the networks so before then we use some mathematical modeling and so on but now they are going into data driven and so on so in the network we have so many layers you can see uh, those from the computer science you know oc layers each one has problems that ml can solve so you can decide which layer you want to work on but for the 6g and the future enablers these are the key according to professor mon petit these are the key things that she's one of the really uh i could uh, they are they are she's a top uh scientist in this uh, 5g and and future networks so she highlighted this in network computing data driven networks joint optimization use of machine learning and artificial intelligence digital twinning so if you are if you are interested in this area try to look at these keywords while searching for papers uh, this is likely going to be the future but what is interesting among them is distribution coordination federation you can search her she has a youtube that she explained how this interrelates to so now generating an idea for instance, I want to give a practical uh, knowledge. Oh, uh, 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 do I still have time? Oh, I can stop here. Someone no, can take time it. Has already finished. All right. Time, but, uh, <laughs> OK, OK, then. Uh, I think I will wait. Then this can I can give you one minute if you can round it up in one minute. OK, so uh, generating an idea. You have keywords in network computing, 5G and metaverse. That's all you know. So what do you need to do? You need to find what this metaverse is. What is this in network? So what do you want to do? So First, you have to go back to study what the 5G is about. You have to know the basic, not deep, the basic. That is the theory that matters. You have to go and check the 5G and then understand what in network computing is, the use cases. How do I find this? I check related works and synthesize this basic knowledge. I, I started this research without no knowledge of it. So, but this is the way I had to go through it. Then what is the use case for this in network computing? I can see extended reality. So and then where will it be located in the network this is i identified those and then i move on to requirements what I, what will the network require to implement this in network computing so i have to highlight the problem this way and then i then come up with requirement management this is where my interest is joint optimization so in joint optimization then i look at the problems so i now narrow it down to a joint optimization of network and computer resources because as you put in network computing in the system many things will happen. I, won't want, I don't want to bother you with that. But then the question is, which requirement can be part of the equation for, uh, for problem formulation? So, so these are the questions. This is how uh, we keep going. Then the challenges generally, how they classify the challenges. If you want to use the existing internet, this is what I identified. Then I move on. Then there is concept a segment uh, routing. I have to study that and classify the research and find where the problem that Relates to me like so this is our focus so you can see it's a step-by-step -step reading i, I uh, try to map out the field so and then so on so then we formulate the research question based on that and simply we design the model so but 5g is missing here so then we go back to the 5g where can this functionality be placed we find out between the run and upf and then so and then we conducted the research and I'm then the modeling okay <laughs> all right so so this is okay <laughs> uh, so thank you very much right. for the wonderful uh, presentation uh, even me that i'm not in computer science but i can really understand how we define computer science and especially the the highlight of the hot topics in computer science i think it will really be helpful to to students in that domain so that to, to identify key areas where the the research is uh, currently going and try to pursue that thank you very much doctor and for the slide later, we are going to share them. In if you send a request to our email, then we can send the, the slide. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Once again. So moving on, I will will move to mathematics from computer science to mathematics. I think they are brothers and sisters. I don't know. I don't have idea in that. So our next uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Abba Ramadan. 
He is currently assistant professor at the Department of Mathematics at University of Alabama, United States. He was a postdoctoral researcher at the same uh, university before he was a teaching assistant at uh, University of Kansas, USA. He did his PhD in mathematics at University of Kansas and then MSc in mathematics at Savanchi University, Turkey, and then bachelor at, at Gaziantep University, Turkey. Uh, he, has a, he has several honors and awards, which include uh, Kansas University Doctoral Student Research Funding, and then Charles G. and Mary Humber Graduate Student Award, Tributa Graduate uh, uh, Scholarship. He recently been appointed as an assistant professor at University of uh, uh, Alabama. Congratulations, uh, Doctor. He published several journal articles in reputable journals. Uh, congratulations, Doctor, for your uh, appointment, and I hope maybe in future if there is any position we can be able to secure one or two position to to uh, our nigerian student so thank you doctor and you can go ahead thank you um I, uh, so uh, l let me go briefly but uh, thank goodness uh doctor ali ibrahim dr ibrahim ali and dr chutia me muhammad have already really touched on the key key things because at at the bottom of it the 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 the, the the idea is more or less similar. What differs by field is the application. So <laughs> I remember Dr. Aliwe emphasizing heavily, um, maybe over heavily on um, literature review. <laughs> literature review is the key to research in general. Um, but going from what I have, so you see, when you are doing the literature review we have to read a lot of papers to identify the knowledge gap unfortunately we cannot just um you know is as 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 i remember Ibrahim saying that you know it's those days are gone where you sit under the leaf and and the apple come down sorry my kid is here um this is it's going to be a tough one to do this day so we have to um like read and read identify the gap in mathematics once you realize the gap it's not easy now do you have the tools to solve this problem now how do you do that you have to first brainstorm yourself think about it a lot and then you talk to people that are even better experts than you because they always exist you, you send them emails um give me a second please right you you always send them emails and one thing i come to learn from my collaboration with people in this area is they are they are very welcoming once you just talk to people that, hey, um, I have this idea, I have this knowledge gap, uh, what do you think I should do? I have this idea, do you think it will work or not? People are in general very welcoming and excited, especially if you come to them already with already premeditated thoughts. And then the next one is, you know, so maybe you cannot solve the problem just mathematics. These days we, we talk to people in, believe it or not, social science, not, as Dr. Chuchami mentioned, in nursing. You might be surprised that sometimes they talk to us or we talk to them, right? They are trying to solve, solve something that require mathematical tools that maybe they, the person working on it lack the knowledge of or does not have enough time to go over. So they just talk to somebody in the other side and vice versa right and sometimes the knowledge gap actually is from real world right so sometimes this this big data is a thing machine learning crystal cryptography uh, mathematics tend to have its tentacles around uh, among uh, all the sciences so we, we we our applications sometimes can come from a lot of places like my recent research is in water waves so if you've been to a lake or anywhere that is water and you know observe some wave uh, it's a very difficult mathematical challenge actually to model such kind of problems as uh, Speaking of modeling and natural uh, phenomena, so so that is like my my current research is on that. Now, formulating a research question is uh, actually tough. 
uh go back to dr Abraham's presentation if you don't read enough you cannot even know what you don't know not alone come up with a question a meaningful one uh so first you have to read a lot know the current standard of research then try to know if the problem is solvable with the current tools or if you may, you might have to develop a new tool to solve it right and you, you can have a contribution in theoretical or i'm sorry guys there's a little guy that is trying to present also yeah, so you want to present also. <laughs> yes. okay so you 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 can contribute theoretically or practically you can be a numerical you can be a theoretical you can be in between like i try to be in between i i i have some publication that are very pure i have some publication that are very applied and now the goal is to narrow down your ideas back to a specific point, right? I remember this example that the teacher me gave with your research related to girls in my degree. You see, you narrow it down to the location, to the subject, to the particular point. And so this also apply in mathematics. Like I want to work with number theory. Specifically, I want to, to work with the prime numbers and you can go pull down to even their decomposition, how they apply in cryptography or something like that, <laughs> right? And you, after you develop this topic, then you test them, you do hypothesis, just like any other area. So <laughs> now, after you have done that, then the next thing is you have to link it to theory, right? Because math, just uh, this is where we debate a little bit with maybe social science. Uh, you cannot repeat a mathematical research now you can repeat it if the method or tools you use are different because mathematics in general once somebody have already worked and developed and present something it become part of the universal theory so i can improve of that or i can devise new method but in general i cannot just come up with this research uh, that has already what? been done yeah. you have to ensure your question ties to or expand on a recognition of theoretical framework if you are doing very applied thing and you have to decide also what you want to do are you want to prove theorem or you want to explore something so in mathematics you have these two types you can be a quantitative a mathematician or a qualitative one or you can this this there is a room for hybrid of both right you can design experiment or model to test hypothesis where they are applicable uh -huh. Now, research planning and time management, this is very, very important. Uh, and we go back to setting the realistic deadline for literature review, because if you are not careful, you can start doing literature review and spend five years, 10 years on literature review. I understand in some areas, even in mathematics, you can just present the literature review and sometimes this are called survey papers. <laughs> but moreover, if you want to just publish beyond literature review, then you have to be realistic on when you stop and move on on the next thing. You have to prioritize exactly what you want to present and be careful with you know the way you you you, you are progressing <coughs> you should identify your resources like if we have mathematical matlab and other math related database that we use in the mathematical research you have to identify them if you have them then that's very good but i know sometimes in nigeria we may have challenges with this sometimes it could be the collaboration then you reach out to somebody in the state or in australia in south korea or wherever and you tell them hey i have this project and i have this idea but i don't have access to this uh softwares uh, you might have can we collaborate you run the simulations for me and we publish and that is, as I just said, you have to find a collaboration in the mathematical mm. domain. Now, Dr. the first I thing... I will give you uh, two minutes. Two minutes? Yes. Okay, Doctor, can you go to uh, manuscript, scratch, uh, manuscript structure? I want to talk really about that, and then um, I just want to end, end all right, there. All right, uh, le let me know once I reach the place. Yes, so please keep day. going. No, back, back. The yes. Okay this is the last slide i will discuss that uh so in mathematics this is the standard uh the way a mathematical paper look like you should have your title it should be brief right and it's really your title should tell the story so if i just read the title i should have a 
good idea what's going on if you remember dr ibrahim's example of this uh paper with B bnn he really gave the title really tell you i mean i didn't know much about bnn or anything but i can remember just from the title so it has to be like that okay. you should have an abstract which if somebody wants to know a little bit more than just the title they can read the abstract and know and in general the title are the abstract are the first thing you present but they are the last thing you write yeah and then your introduction should outline the problem the objectives and its significance then you go to the methods that you describe your theoretical research like what did you do how did you do it and then eventually you present your finding in much sometimes we have title abstract introduction results their method discussion and conclusion references always at the end but sometimes we we, we do um permit the results sometimes we give result immediately but actually I mean, anybody that does research realize that that is the last thing you get of course but in, in much we, we, we tend to keep our audience engaged so i tell you the little bit of what it is about i give you a little bit story about it give you some introduction and boom this is the result even if you are not interested on the method this is the result because in mathematics result is the key thing uh sorry for all the hustles that this caused and uh also this little guy he's been interrupting the presentation uh, uh thank you guys sorry sorry about all this uh thank you very much uh uh doctor that's a very wonderful presentation i like it how you you coin it to 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 mathematics now i can really understand okay yes there there are some uh, research that you can extract out of uh, uh, mathematics or out of numbers uh, thank you very much doctor so our next speaker is uh, dr muhammad Chutiami, who is currently a lecturer at the university of technology sydney australia uh he was he's also adjunct phd supervisor at mockery university sydney australia he did his phd at mockery university msc in public health university of uh, bedfordshire luton united kingdom and he did his bachelor in nursing uh, at university of Maiduguri, nigeria uh, uh, dr chuetiami is a registered nurse in nigeria as well as in australia with a background in community and population health bringing over a decade of diverse clinical academic and field experience he is an he's active collaborator in the prestigious global uh, burden of disease gbo network at university of uh, washington uh, united states his expertise include infection disease and immuni uh, immunization uh, family health and social uh, determinant he published several articles over i think 51 articles he has more than 1,300 uh, 1, citations in Google Scholar and currently a guest editor in the journal Children Under Special Issue Children, Public Health and Healthcare Global uh, Perspective and Nutrients. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. To, 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 to have you here today. And one thing like Dr. He's mentored a lot of uh, uh, our students and he helped a lot of students in various ways he can. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. And you can go on. Thank you. I'll just share the screen and get started. Okay. So can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes, 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 you can see. Okay. So what I'll do is, uh, let me see what if I go to a uh, slideshow. Yeah, can you all see my screen still? That's good yes, idea. Yeah, okay. you are seeing. Lovely. So hello, everyone, and thank you for coming to this webinar. I know time is not by our side. I will try not to repeat uh, so many important things that um, Dr. Ibrahim have said, which I think can go across different research areas. So for me, as uh, 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 Dr. Buhari said, I will be talking about health research, which I call them the health research that are associated or within the domain of social sciences. I know it may sound weird, but um, 
most of the about 70 percent i will say of the research that we do in health is within the general domain of social science this is simply because we work with people we ask people questions we talk about their experiences we talk about their opinions and the same thing it happens in social sciences like education like sociology public administration and so on and so forth so most of the research idea goes hand in hand so generating a research idea so unlike in the case of uh, the computer science that we have had in health in particular you can basically research on anything so you there is no such thing as uh, you know you have to narrow your thought to certain key areas of course there are hot topics like issues of uh, cancer covid 19 when it came and uh, and so on and so forth but basically in health related research especially within the domain of uh, health sciences you can actually research anything it depends on how good on how good your methodology is and how well you dis uh, you devise your um your data analysis and write a good research paper. So uh, first of all, when you think about doing a research, you don't even need to go outside of your comfort zone. Just think about the things that interest you. Let's say you are a medical doctor. What interests you? Do you want to, uh, are you interested in people's mental health? Or let's say you are a sociologist. Do you like just to talk about people's experiences in buying and selling, or maybe people's experiences with buying product, or maybe people's experiences with food? Anything that interests you at all, you can generate your research idea from there. So you can make an observation of the things that happen around you, and that curiosity can prompt you to say, oh, I really want to know how, why, why are people coming to this university a lot? I want to know their experiences. That is within social sciences, and I can do it even as somebody with a background in nursing and public health. And then if you think about this idea going forward, you need to look at the uh, little bit of literature around it. So let's say I want to do something around why are so many students interested in studying health-related fields in Nigeria? So I will first of all go and Google, okay, student experiences about studying in uh, uh, about studying health courses in uh, in different countries. And then I will see what has been done in that field. And based on that, I can then come up with my research. And the good thing with our research is that you can see a research that somebody has done, let's say, in, in Vietnam. And you can repeat completely the same topic in Nigeria is absolutely allowed. That is why for us, I will say, we have a lot of windows that we can explore. And then you can also attend conferences, webinars to see what people are presenting, and then you can come up with your topic from there. And also another important thing is to consider the practical relevance of what you are doing. Ensure the topic is significant to the target population. Doesn't matter which population you are, you can make a difference in that particular. So choose an appropriate research method. Remember, in the, within the domain of social sciences, we can either do a qualitative research, or we can do a quantitative research, or we can do a mixed method research, or we can do even a literature review that you don't go anywhere. You sit down and then formulate the research and publish it in a very good journal. I will show you an example at the end of my slide. So generally, when you do a qualitative research, you are trying to explore things like experience and you do something like interview, go and talk to people. OK, tell me what is your experience about studying social science at the University of Medjugorje, something like that, so that people can talk and express their inner feelings. And you can do a quantitative, for example, uh, you want to get too many people and you want to see um, on a scale of, let's say, one to five to what extent do they agree with certain event that happens around them. And it can be a mixed method whereby you put together the qualitative and the quantitative together. And sometimes you can, if there are so many research in an area and you're still interested, you can conduct a systematic review on it or even a systematic review of systematic reviews, which of course we don't have time to go through each of these. So, and then define your variables. So, Always when you come up with a research as you say, what exactly am I trying to find? Which outcome am I interested in? So make it very, very clear. 
and this is just an example and please don't forget ethics approval is really really important they can't even publish the research if you go for good journals you have to um you have to have ethics approval so mostly you get this from any institution even from a hospital let's say if let's say you take the data from a hospital or let's say if you work in some sort of organization you can always try to see how you can get uh, a documented uh, paper signed to say that you are allowed to conduct that research is really important in this field. And then conducting the research, I always suggest try to do with people. In our field, it's not the kind of field that you will think you are good enough. And that is why many of the professors that we work now, out of there like hundreds or 200 research, barely you see them doing a research alone like many professors don't even have a single research that they do it alone. So collaborative work is really important. You can work with your friend or maybe your supervisor in your undergraduate or anybody that you think you have similar interest. And then think about uh, the how will you collect the data. Since so we say it, this research requires interacting with people. That is why we call it within the domain of social science. So you can do your, collect your data either online or face to face. And there are so many tools available that you can use to collect data. Let's say I want to assess people's mental health. There are a lot of tools. I want to assess their knowledge. There are a lot of tools. And now with the introduction of AI, you can actually, um, come up with your, uh, with your data collection instrument using AI. I wish we have time. So for those, all of you must have heard about ChatGPT. You just go to the free version, just type your topic and say, help me come up with a, uh, with, with, with a questionnaire to study experiences of people at the university or first year student at university. And ChatGPT is gonna give you a very nice a set of questions that you can ask either online or print it on paper and give it to people. So after that, um, uh, the data management always is really important to ensure that your data is secured and then think about how you can uh, analyze it because the analysis you can do it on your own or you can uh, get somebody a statistician to do it and it's absolutely allowed and you can publish it so um how do we analyze qualitative data mostly we use softwares like in vivo but you sorry, don't have sorry, to sorry doctor i will really love you also to <laughs> to, to yeah. summarize. Yeah, okay, okay, uh, sure. Yeah, I think I have just one more slide, that's it. Okay, so um, again, you can use chat, something like ChatGP to, tell, to help you uh, analyze qualitative research. It's very easy. You can browse in the ChatGP, how do I analyze my qualitative data? And it will give you the step by step. And you can use uh, softwares like SPSS to do quantitative research analysis. And for systematic review, this one we have had a big webinar about this. So you can have a look at the webinar another time. So when you come to writing the manuscript, always the manuscript, it goes with abstract first, then you have the introduction, you have the method, you have the result, and you have the discussion. And always I tell people, Whenever you want to publish, go and get a sample. There are so many publish, open take the sample and formulate your manuscript in line with that, which already um, Ibrahim have explained some of this. And just write your manuscript and then select the journal and publish it. So I will talk about how you will select the journal in our next session. And this is just an example of recent papers that we publish. So this is just the abstract to tell you or to give you the basic information about those papers. Thank you. Oh, that's that, that's wonderful. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for the wonderful uh, presentation. And I I really encourage uh, a student that are in this health science, social science, to go to YouTube and watch the uh, a workshop that uh, Doctor Chutiami has uh, done on systematic review. I think it will really help you if you watch. Uh, uh, that video on systematic review. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor. Uh, now we'll move on to Doctor Abdul Adr Nagoro, but he's a postdoctoral researcher currently at International University of uh, South Korea. He did his PhD in molecular biotechnology in Chunnam National University, South Korea. He received his uh, MSc in molecular genetics, Comsat University in Pakistan. 
Bachelor in Applied Biology from Bayero University, Kano. He's currently a member of Insensory Limited, a, a company that is uh, 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 expert in insects. And current, uh, recently, they have uh, invented a, a machine that can capture a mosquito from a wide distance. That is from like one kilometer, uh, the machine can capture my mosquito and identify it. He, he also published uh, several articles in reputable journals. Thank you very much, Dr. Oh, uh, many of the background and basic of research has been explained by the previous um, presenters. So as uh, if we have a biologist here listening, so to develop a research idea uh, in, in terms of biology or bioinformatics, you need uh, to look at these uh, eight types of research gaps, how to identify, I mean, this eight type of uh, research gaps. So I will just talk briefly on some and uh, because they are the most important because, for example, uh, considering a literature uh, review gap, this liter uh, literature review usually, it came in a form of review papers. Usually you can review a paper, let's say from 1999 down to 2010, but now we are in 2012, so the publications made uh, between this time uh, might have changed so many things in the science, and you might need to uh, make your own review based on this uh, years. So uh, that's for literature review gap. And when you talk about geographical research gap, this, uh, how to identify this gap is more peculiar to the area like uh, population genetics. Uh, plus the bioinformatics. Population genetics, as Tuchitami explained one of their research, it's like you can use a particular population, for example, you identify SNP in Korean population. So you can repeat the same research using the same uh, polymorphism, but using different uh, population. Uh, it can give the same result or a uh, uh, different result, but scientifically it's allowed because you are using different population. Also in the field of uh, evolutionary biology, uh, you can also uh, use the same technique, same protocol, same method, uh, same organism, but in different location. For example, you identify a particular species evolving in, a, in, in South Korea, then you can also, I mean, you can check the genome composition to see how, how the genes are composed and how it relates to that particular environment. You can repeat the same research maybe in Nigeria, in Australia, or in USA. So this is a clear and simple research gap which most of the biologists use to make publications. Uh, also in terms of uh, methodology, especially this is more peculiar to bioinformatics, uh, there are various bioinformatics tools used to solve uh, biological problems. For example, when you talk about microbiome analysis, you can use what we call CHIME. There is first version, there is second version to solve this kind of problem. Uh, so you can you can you can use another tool like RBP pipeline to solve the same problem, but using different uh, pipeline just to compare how these two pipelines or how these two tools uh, could. Uh, identify the variations in species or in genus or whatsoever. So this is a big gap which we usually explore in biological field. Also ethical research, in terms of ethical research gap, uh, in biology we deal with animal models, even human, monkeys, mice, and whatever. So in case you need to use this kind of model, you need the ethical approval. Maybe Mr. A did his research in USA or in Canada or somewhere else using, using in silico, that is computational method. So you can decide, okay, let me repeat the same research, but using my model. In this, you are considering the ethical research gap because he didn't use the mice model. Another person can decide to use monkeys. He is using this kind of uh, uh, model based on the ethical uh, research gap and another person can decide to use human as we as as we see in terms of COVID. Many scientists use humans to do their research. Uh, so these are the gaps. Or when it comes to the field of molecular docking or drug discovery, some people use mice to to test their drugs. This is also ethical gap. While other people can use monkeys. Even at 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 some point, some they use dogs uh, depending on the drug and the target. So these are the gaps that scientists, I mean, biologists use 
to 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 understand i mean to 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 develop a hypothesis and make publications so in terms of uh conducting the research these are like some important steps uh, i don't want to talk about the first two but this one obtaining R irb approval there are different types of approval so whenever you are developing uh conducting a research in biology at some point you need approval for example uh you are dealing with a virus in your lab so you need to get approval before you can conduct that kind of research and your laboratory need to have that kind of safety level for example you call it f1 f2 f3 blah 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 so you need to check that kind of approval before you can you can you can conduct that uh, type of research if you don't have it you are not allowed to do it then in terms of um writing the abstract sometimes you don't need to complete uh everything you can write an abstract and just submit to a meeting or conferences and then you can let some gap for example in biology we can divide our papers into different parts depending on how much input you you have in that kind of paper so you can decide to take some part of your research and, uh, and present in a conference and all that uh yeah this is this is very important so when it comes to analyzing data there are various tools but let me just briefly show us this is a chart on bioinformatics this is very important database geo which is under ncbi or pubmed something like that so this is where you can source what you call a secondary data for genomics transcriptomics <laughs> and, and 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 all that so you can use this database and then you can you can input your your keywords uh, and then you can get uh, secondary data and this is the long pipeline you can use in terms of transcriptomics and then you can analyze your data this is allowed uh, and most important point here is that usually when people conducted research using animal model like mice whatsoever they need to deposit their data into this database whereas you as a researcher you can check the gap within their publication and then go to this database download their data reanalyze it and fill that gap so this is the long uh, pipeline uh, for conducting this kind of research i believe we are going to share it in our gmg platform so already uh, the the three uh, presenters explain how their manuscript looks like in mathematics in social science and medicine also in the uh, computer engineering. So for biology, this is the basic, uh, this is the common, I mean, uh, structure for manuscript. It starts usually with abstract after the title, then introduction, then methodology, then result, and then discussion, finally conclusion. In some manuscript, you don't need to separate result and discussion, you can combine it together. That's why I put this kind of thing. And remember, when you are dealing with review, sometimes you don't need conclusion, yeah. And again, sometimes you can interchange the position of methodology and result. One can come first and the other one can come last, depending on the journal. So while writing manuscript in biology-related courses, you must check the manuscript structure first, I mean the journal structure first, and then you start drafting your manuscript. So this is the summary, but I would like just to talk about this point. As you can see here, uh, I wrote right introduction or write discussion. This is a cheat, actually. I was I was I was um, guided by my PhD professor. Usually, you write discussion first. After you write discussion, it will give you like a hint on what to write in your introduction because you must connect your story between the introduction and discussion. So while you are writing your manuscript, try a write discussion first. After you finish the discussion, then you can come and narrate your story in the introduction part. This is very important. It works. And yeah, one can try it. So I think I manage my time very well. Thank you for listening. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Actually, that is a very wonderful uh, and clear yeah. presentation. As a uh, uh, biologist also, I clearly like uh, understand uh, how the things work in biology. And, so we will move on to uh dr chutiami now we have known how to develop an idea 
and we know how to structure our manuscript. So now let's see, okay, now let's assume we finish this thing and we write our manuscript. Then how can you select a journal to submit your research? How can you differentiate a journal from a predatory journal and a real journal? And then how can even know what is an open access, what is closed access, what is hybrid journal? How can we navigate that? And we are going to hear that from Dr. Muhammad Chutiani. Dr. Go on. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I am back again. Identifying a target journal. This is really, really important because uh, many of us, especially from Nigeria, even myself, before I I went to UK for my master's, is such a big deal. And uh, a lot of us end up publishing in either very low quality or even predatory journals. So in terms of looking for scholarship, especially if you want to go to big countries like, you know, UK, US, Australia, Canada, all of these countries with very high rate of competition, you need to have at least one or two good journal articles. And when I say good, I will tell you how you can identify that. That said, still quantity matters in, on top of the quality. So even if you publish that uh, articles that are not very qualitative, still you, it can augment if you have a few qualitative ones. So generally there are three categories of journal. It can be open access, which you pay money. I'm sure many of us are aware of this. And then uh, apart from that, we have the close access or the subscription journal. And this is where I think many of us in Nigeria are not aware of. You can publish your good research without paying anything. So the only thing is uh, the full text will not be made available unless uh, you have a university subscription or you buy, or you can put the abstract on something like ResearchGate and then when somebody requested, you can send it to him. But these days, many of the journals, they operate within the last domain, which is the hybrid. So they can publish either without any payment as a subscription, and then if you want to pay, you can just pay. So I will show you some things on the on my browser, but I just want to highlight this. So another important thing to think about when you are selecting a journal, the first thing I will always say is think about the indexing. So if the indexing of the journal is in the two major indexing organization in the world, definitely the journal has met that minimum quality, like the position for a PhD that I shared uh, last week in our group, all that the professor told me was that the person should have at least one publication in Scopus Index Journal. And that was the minimum quality requirement. So please, whenever you want a quality publication, make sure the journal is indexed either in Scopus or is indexed in Web of Science. I will show you that on my browser in a minute. And also you can um, look at, on top of that, if you want to go further, you can think about things like the quartile of the journal, is it Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and then you can think about the impact factor as well, or even hedge index, which are important but less important compared to the indexing, in my opinion. So you think about the audience and the scope, uh, who are you targeting for that journal? That will also help you to make a decision because you're going to come across so many journals at the end of the day. Acceptance rate is also important. I will show you an example as well. Some journals have very low acceptance rate, so you don't want to waste your time. Get an article to them because most of the journal that publish without money, it has to be high quality, and that is why their acceptance rate is very low. So you want to be realistic with yourself. Look at your research and see whether it is fit for that journal. And then you can choose whether open access or whatever. So I will show you the examples. So journal submission guideline, all journals, all reputable journals, they have a guideline on how to format your manuscript. But if that become confusing for you, just open the journal, look at some articles that they publish, download one and just formulate your manuscript similar to that article published. That can be a lot easier. Common mistakes for us to avoid is formatting errors. Ensure that your paper follows the journal formatting requirement because as I said, they always have it and I will show you an example. And then the length and the sections of the article. So like in the field of health and social science, mostly they're restricted to between around 4,000 to all the way to 8,000 plus or minus so make sure you stick to what they say and then the abstract is sometimes even 150 watts sometimes 200 sometimes up to 300 and then if there are 
if there is anything important that you are not able to fit it in the manuscript, you can submit it as a supplemental material. Predatory journals, they are just so smart these days and it's difficult to actually avoid them because they try to do all the things or most of the things that the important journals do. And that is why I say, for my advice, always look at the indexing. It's very unlikely for them to be indexed in this key indexing organization, Web of Science and Scopus, if they are predatory, even though there are a few issues which we are not going into now. So most of the time, if you see a journal just sending you emails, like, okay, send us a paper, send us a paper, you didn't request it, and they just found your email somewhere, question them and check the journal website to ensure that it's authentic. And if you are confused, check whether it's indexed in these two organizations again. And then most of these journals, they don't do peer review. They will tell you it's accepted as it is. There is no academic journal that will just publish your paper without peer review. It's not allowed. So you know it's predatory if they just tell you they'll publish it like that. And then um, when they talk too much about money, is also something that you should question. So think about it. So these are the key websites that I want to show you. Uh, the first one, Scopus, which is from Elsevier. This is one indexing organization. Any journal you see here in what Scopus or Web of Science, they are mostly uh, great journals. It's unlikely for you to find a predatory journal there. And then the next two sites, which we can share the slide, you can look at it as well, is to help you find a journal, including journal that you will publish for free without paying any money. So I will just uh, stop that sharing and then share my browser to show you some of these things that I was saying. A brief so, uh, yeah, I will just, uh, uh, which one shall I start? So I will go through with the Scopus. Or let me just show you how to select a journal article first. So let's say I have my, I have, I have written my research paper and now I want to publish it. So this is one easy way to do. Just go to your Google browser and put, uh, Elsevier has thousands of journals. So it's unlikely for you not to find a journal that can suit in your field. So you just go to your browser and put Elsevier journal finder it will come up and you will find something like this. And take the abstract of your paper, like I'm doing now, I hope it will let me do that, and just go there and paste it. I don't know if that can show on your screen as well. So you just, I copy my abstract, no, that's not it. Oh, come on, whenever we are. So just a second, I'm just copying an abstract from one of my papers and then I will paste it and I will show you how it will, um, how it will come up with journal's uh, suggestion and then you will check which one is more suited for your paper. So just a second, I'm just copying. Yeah, and here we are. So I just copy my abstract and just put it in there. And I just say, find a journal. So as you can see, it will just uh, do the search based on the content that I uploaded. And it will come up with so many journals as you can see on the site. I hope you can all still see my screen. And not yes, only please. does, does it come up with the journals? It gives you a brief information about them. You see like this one, it says, this journal is called Vaccine, which is suited for my paper. The impact factor of the journal is 4.5, and the journal is a hybrid journal. How do I know it's hybrid? It says open access, I have to pay this much money. It's a huge amount of money. But if I don't want to pay anything, I can still publish it. That is why it says no publication charge. So from here, I know this journal is a hybrid, which most of the journal. And again, I go down another one, mostly hybrid. And also it shows me how many days this journal take to respond and tell me whether they will publish it or not. As you can see, three days, 78 days. So they make it so easy for you to select. 
all you need like this one is only open access so you just click on it whichever one you think is uh, suited for your publication you just click on it and it will take you to the journal website so you can click on more about the journal so another site that do um that will help you find uh find where to publish your paper is Springer Nature, which is very similar. So I put the link, just please go and check the link later. The same thing, put your abstract or keyword, it will come with suggestion and you just go around and check. So the other thing that I want to show you is how to look at the index. And as I said, for me, that is key factor that differentiate between a good journal and a bad journal. And that is why it's important to look at that. So Scopus is one key area, as I said, which is by Elsevier. So if you just type Scopus, S-C-O-P-U-S on your browser, it will come up with this site and you just type the name of the journal. Why is it not showing now? Can you still see my browser? Not yet. Oh boy. No. Okay, let me stop it again and then share one more. Maybe yeah, we have to around still it's not showing. It's not showing. I think it's no. just showing your profile. Okay, how unfortunate. Okay, I don't know what happened. I did the same thing like before, but it's not showing. So um as I said, I put the site for you to have a look. So just uh please uh have a look at that one later at your convenience both of them oh i really wish i can show that it's so stupid because i have so many pages that i want to share with you but i don't think it's working okay let me see if this one can work still you cannot see anything right yes Okay, so it's not working. Um, take the website that I shared earlier and please click on the website. It will show you the quartile of the journal, whether it is Q1, it is Q2, it is Q3, which are the four categories of a journal on top of the indexing. So as I said, first of all, look at the indexing, whether it is indexing Scopus and Web of Science, if it is indexing one of these, it's also okay, but many journals are indexed in both. And then after that, there are two other things that you can go ahead and check. You don't have to, but you can also check the quartile. Is it Q1, is it Q2, is it Q3 and Q4? That one is shown on Scopus. And on the other hand, you can also check the impact factor, which is shown by Web of Science. And uh, clearly you can see this from the journal website. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, you can send questions please if you have further questions because i really mm -hmm. don't know how i'm gonna mm -hmm. do it if i cannot share the thing from my browser which i already opened the pages unfortunately so yeah. we will re revisit this another time thank yes. you guys uh, thank you very much uh, doctor for uh, for doing that i think it was very clear especially how to uh, select a journal based on your uh, written abstract you can give a hundred of suggestion of journal and then you can easily pick the one that you you think is fit so i think we can quickly go to the next part now we know how to submit the journal then now let's assume we have submit our journal and it has undergone a review process or it has been returned to us for for review then how can we what are the factors to consider while we have to review our our manuscript how to respond to reviewers which we are going to hear by uh, from uh, Dr. Ibrahim Aliu, Dr. Please, and if it's going to be brief, that would be appreciated. Yes, Dr. Go ahead, but we cannot hear you. I think maybe you. Here is the peer review process. Okay. Okay. So in the peer review process, the the author submits the article. The article is first received by the art article editor, which could be an admin, an admin officer who checks for formatting, referencing, things that we, we were 
we were presenting today that are important. That, that uh, so precisely, I think is formatting and then the referencing. Then if it is okay, he sends this to the editor. That is like an academician or a professor who is uh, who who has been assigned to be the editor. He checks it if the paper is meet their standard he sends it out for a review that he set up a panel probably three two or so depending on their 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 policy so they send it out to these guys to review it so when they review it then they send their recommendations back to the editor so the editor review review based on the advice he gets from this panel he sends you uh he can either accept your paper if all of them accept it so journals normally have uh, uh like uh, like uh, how they operate some require at no one among the reviewers they invited to reject your paper if the two reject and one accept they reject the paper if two accept one reject they reject the paper most of both of them must not reject most of the top journals do like that or some will allow and invite another person to decide so if it's accepted, they can accept it right away, and then they you go through again formatting, then it's available online. If it is rejected, they send you, okay, please, we've reviewed it, we are sorry, we cannot take further, uh, they won't review again that you are advised not to resubmit. So that's rejected. And sometimes they ask you to revise, most of the time. So in the revision process, you will sit back with the reviewers' comments and their concerns. So. I, this is the point at which you will have to work on those comments the reviewers gave you and then send back to the editor. So in this process, there is uh, what you need to take note of. First of all, the review process is to, the review process is to, you should know it's to improve, it's to improve your manuscript. Sorry, can you hear me? I can, okay. Uh -huh. So the review, the review process is to improve your manuscript. During the comments you re you receive, you have to sometimes you receive ill-informed or biased or problematic comments. That is the reviewer's comments. Maybe you find out that he has no knowledge of your domain or he 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 is not helpful in any way. He could just give you some. I will give you some examples of what I face. So, and then what is the key? At this point, the key to acceptance of your paper lies on how much, how good you write your response to reviewers. So, what is this response letter? So, it's usually a document you send along by alongside the re revised manuscript, summarizing the changes you have made in response to the critics. So, how do you respond? How does it look like? This is what, what uh, this presentation is about. So, there are ten rules that I find very interesting. You can see the reference there. You can check it out. First rule is provide overview, then quote the full set of reviews. I will show you how that works. And then down to number 10. I think, let, let me just get in there so that we can do practical. This is one of my articles. So first and foremost, you provide overview. So in the response letter from where you can see, I have the paper ID, the paper title, and the response. It can take a, a, another shape, but we thank the reviewers then we tell them what the document contains that is we have a point-to-point -point response we have an updated manuscript showing changes and then the ones that another article they will in the in the revision letter they will tell you what you need to send back so you we basically take that and put and then uh, we go on so rule number one provide an overview then quote the full set of reviews so for reviewer one as you can see we have reviewer one concern five so this is the reviewer, this is what he mentioned, that is in blue. He says, for the same data set, experiments should be made and compared with GRU. So doing this, we've satisfied uh, reviewer uh, rule one. Rule two is be polite and respectful of all reviewers. So you can see in our response, we said, thank you for your observation and suggestion. The experiment were conducted accordingly. And then they said, accept blame. You get it. What it's not in your good interest to fight with the uh, with the reviewers. Whatever they said, always accept blame. This will save you. It's not in your good interest. They can decide to reject your paper. Then make response self-contained. You get it straight to the point. Then response to every point raised by the reviewer. By following this format, you will make sure that you respond to everyone, every of their point. Do not 
have uh, jumped it because some can be critical and when they when they receive when the editor receive your reviews he send it back to them most of the time he invites them again to check if you have done what they ask you to do so try to respond to every point then use uh, topography to help the reviewer navigate you can see i have reviewer one concern five you already know by that i bolt it and then i put a number then autos respond what is my response i agree to what they said you get it the experiment were conducted what is the action i did then I now explain. Sometimes I quote and then refer them back. You can see I said uh, in page nine has been introduced, like so so has been introduced in page nine to discuss the finding after the experiment. The discussion is as follows. So I discuss a little bit excerpt. This is the result I find, and you could see how I put it. Then they said, whenever possible, begin your response to each comment with a direct answer. In my answer, in my author's response, you can see I thank them. Then I said the the response is that we conducted the experiment. We accept what they said and investigated. And then rule number eight, it says, when possible, do what the reviewer asks you to do. So I will show you interesting facts. This is one of the paper, another paper. The reviewer said, I would like to suggest that the authors to include flowchart for better understanding. But I know I have a flowchart there. What did I do? I did not just tell him I have a flowchart. I, I have a figure that has all these constituents. So I drew it again. You see, I said the flowchart of our idea is included in page three, indicating. Uh, so meanwhile, the numbers indicate. So, so, so I explained what I have before. Then the action I did, we redraw the flowchart as below. But however, the figure in the main manuscript appears to suffice as the flowchart are below introduce no new information. So what is the idea here? I do it and then I tell them why I do not include it. So after redrawing this, I tell them it did not introduce any new information so i do not include it so just instead of including the flowchart we enhance the explanation you could see how you tackle this kind of issue if you do not do if you you have to do what they ask you and then you have to explain what you do then declare about what changes relative to the previous version so doing this can uh, help you what did you do you can see we said we enhance the explanation in that so if necessary, rights response twice. Why did they say this? In the, if you check the link there, they said, when you write the first response, you may be angry because some reviewers might not be really friendly. They can say so many things that makes you angry. So to make sure that you do not uh, fight with him or something in your response, that when you come down, you should rewrite it again to remove any strong statement or so on. So what do I want to show here? We sincerely, so this is an example of problematic review that I got. He says, innovation is ability is the sole ability is uh, innovation ability is the soul of an article. We sincerely hope that we can communicate and make progress together to improve our innovation ability. That is all I got. Instead of him itemizing where is the problem, he just feels there is no innovation and he do not point where it is. This is all I got. So I spent like three pages trying to explain to him. But at the end, I got it published. He accepted it, still having his worries, but that was the comment. You could see this is problematic, but how do you respond to this kind of issues? You can see I thank him for his valuable observation to improve our manuscript. As rightly pointed out, we have improved our manuscript presentation to portray our own contribution. Then action. So we take this action now. I just, he saw us citing a lot of paper. He didn't know that. That paper was our paper, so we have to explain to him. We tell him what the previous work was, and then what is this work trying to do? And then we now go on and then compare again, go to our, so like two pages, I think they're about, to just explain this point. But at the end, we got it published. So you should be aware of this kind of things. You should not just owe to her a friendly and then one, this guy can make your paper go down. So what is important here? Uh, yeah, so action to the comment is covered. So so I would like to conclude with uh, Henson uh, Maxine statement that says all progress is born of inquiry. Doubt is often better than uh, overconfidence, uh, uh, overconfidence for it's a list to inquiry and inquiry leads to invention. So writing an article as we have seen today is really a daunted task for young researchers. The key is systematic approach. Uh, uh, and the key to good article is systematic approach. So sharing your knowledge uh, through publication, 
as uh, the uh, speakers have pointed out, is really critical to the success of your career. So I think you should get out your pen and start writing, uh, as that is what your works merits. Thank you for your time. Oh, that's wonderful, Doctor. Thank you very much. Uh, it's very clear how to to understand how to respond to to you. And I really like the way you say the, one of the rules is you have to you have to answer all the questions or you have to address them. <laughs> Never say like no. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Doctor. So now we will move on to the last part of the uh, our today's webinar, which is uh, now we let's assume we have get our response and we revise our paper we have uh let's say our paper got accepted and even get published congratulations to us so now how can we uh promote our publication how can we use like social media or other uh, research based media such as google scholar or research gate to, pub, uh, to promote our research uh which is going to be addressed by dr meogoro and i'm sure he's going to be brief about it thank you no at this time i'm not going to be brief <laughs> <laughs> we are not brief even before <laughs> uh... mm. So can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, for the post publication consideration, uh, which which requires uh, it's like advertisement. I can put if I can put it this way. Uh, the first thing that should come to your mind is it's like when you make something in a company a product you don't just take it to a market and start selling nobody will sell it so one of the aims of publication is to publicize what what, what you already publish like to maximize the number of audience that's why in the scientific community provide several platforms like google scholar research get and all that where scientists will go and share their publications and other, uh, others could easily read, comment, give suggestions, and even make uh, collaborations. And it gives a lot of researchers jobs and grants and whatsoever. So that's the essence of promoting uh, your research. So sharing your research via academic social networks uh, and, all, uh, and also non-academic social networks. As I mentioned, there are various platforms just like ResearchGate. If you don't know, this is like the logo of ResearchGate. Once you type it on uh, Google, you can be able to identify the, the official website. Here you need to create your account and then put your publications there. Follow some researchers and then you can you can easily get recognized by a similar research group also the academia.edu this is like their logo uh you can you can make a simple research on google and and and, and then uh check your article there or you upload your article there some platforms they automatically regenerate i mean generate your own profile by the time you publish with a particular uh, publishers your article will automatically go there. I know like uh, in Frontiers, once you publish your paper in Frontiers, uh, your paper will automatically go to their, to their own uh, database. So in terms of um, other social media, for example, we use uh, Facebook, we use Twitter, uh, and we use uh, other like LinkedIn. So these social media uh, platforms, they are not just for, for our own uh, chats or sharing pictures and all that. Some scientific, uh, scientific communities are also using those platforms to advertise their work. And it works a lot. Like, for example, myself, I got a lot of uh, research collaboration via Twitter because I share some of my publications on Twitter. 
and uh, I even engage myself in various communities there. Uh, so that's very important. Also, engaging with the academic community and media outlet. For example, when you talk about LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a professional uh, uh, platform, actually. Uh, it's not for posting pictures like Instagram or some videos like in Snapchat and whatever. So engaging your research activity on LinkedIn is very important. Even uh, some of the companies or some institute or some professors, they get some students through LinkedIn. Like myself, I, I got a job in, in one of the UK colleges affiliated here in Korea through LinkedIn. I don't know how, but by the time you make your profile, you publish your, I mean, you upload your papers, maybe they have some algorithm where they will search, uh, okay, this guy is a biotechnologist or bioinformatician and he resides in Korea, blah, blah. So they can filter all those informations. I read about your publication, then they can reach out to you. So that's how I, 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 I got one of my jobs here. They reached out to me based on my LinkedIn profile, which is related to what they want. So this is very important. Also, Twitter community, when you know how to use Twitter, this is, this is a very good way to, to advertise your research. I could remember like Buhari in person, one, one time he published a paper and, and he shared it on Twitter. Uh, and I think within one one day or there about one of the uh, famous researchers in the world in that field uh, liked his tweet and he retweet his his paper. He advertised that publication, which which become uh, one of the trends in their area of research. So this is this is very important. I don't know if they continue discussing about it or not. Uh, also, myself, when I share my paper uh, on, on, on Twitter, I, I got response from one of the professors from Australia, which went viral in their community because they work on something similar to vaccine. So that can earn you, that can earn your paper a high number of reads, and it can increase chance of citations, also collaboration as well as job opportunities. So going by uh, tracking citation and impact factor one of the good ways to quantify if your research is good enough or not is how many people uh, cite that kind of work uh, also number of readers uh, matters but the citation is the most important it means people recognize your work and then they cite it but how can people read your paper like in large number is important because the more people read your paper, the more they get recognized and the higher the chance of being cited. For example, uh, there are various tools like a Google Scholar. Google Scholar, this, this you don't have to upload your own paper on Google Scholar. This is an auto-regenerated platform. By the time you publish your paper, so long as that paper, uh, that journal is indexed in Google Scholar, your, your, your paper will automatically go to your personal Google Scholar account. So also, if you want to search for paper to cite, the easiest way, one of the easiest ways is to go to Google Scholar. Uh, I don't know if we have enough time to demonstrate. Maybe at the end, after I finish, I can demonstrate one or two. So you can easily cite paper from Google Scholar. So also your paper can easily be cited on Google Scholar. And talking about the citation, as Dr. Chitiam explained, uh, some of the citation styles are already uh, encrypted in the Google Scholar. So you just have to click on the citation. Uh, let me try to make a little demonstration because uh, some of us are still having difficulty in citing. Can you see my Chrome? Yes, we can see. Okay. Okay. The AI had me already. <laughs> um, so this is Google Scholar. For example, oh my God, change the language. Yeah. So for example, let me write a uh, microbiome uh, or whatever. 
Okay, these are papers. Oh, hey, change the language. So, like, these are papers. If you want to use latest papers, like from 2012, you can just come here and click. Only papers published in 2024, like this. If you want only from 2023, you can do like this. If you want papers, like, throughout the dates, irrespective of which year, blah, blah, you can come like this. So for you to make citation, you can see saved, citation, time, blah, blah. So you just have to click, click here, citation. So in case of this paper, there are only three types of citation. Like this, also this paper, you click citation. That is this kind of citation, upper, blah, blah. So directly, you can just click to end note, and this citation style will go to end note. So this is how you can cite your paper. Uh, or how someone can equally cite your paper. OK. So okay. what is OK? It's not time. <laughs> time has passed already, but you can summarize us. Uh, OK, so as I indicate for Google Scholar, you can use other platforms like this uh, to increase your chance of citation. So in terms of planning for future um, research, uh, usually, as Dr. Ibrahim explained, when we publish paper during the process, we get revisions by reviewers. And the purpose of those revisions is to make our paper a better quality. So from those comments given by reviewers, you can, you can drive some ideas which you don't have it and either improve in that current paper or acknowledge it for the next paper. I believe it happened to most of us here as researchers. We, we develop so many ideas and improve the quality of our manuscripts. Also, we got so many ideas that help us to develop other hypotheses in the future research. As uh, again, those comments you get from social media platforms like LinkedIn, Google Scholar, blah, 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 uh, ResearchGate, there are also better ways of, of getting more ideas because when you share your article, people make recommendations, some they send you email, some they send you personal message and all that. That's also another way on how to develop a future, future research. But um, one of the common and uh, accepted ways is to read similar article by the time you are planning to make a hypothesis or to design a research you need to study well do uh, study as many papers as possible related to your area of research and make sure you focus on the papers that are published recently that's one of the best ways of um, of of getting uh, research ideas so thank you very much Okay, thank you very much, Doctor, for the uh, wonderful uh, presentation. And uh, here we come to the end of the presentations of our today's webinar on uh, from idea to publication, a complete guide to publishing your academic uh, research. I think you can all agree with me if I say, yeah, uh, this uh, our excellent researchers. They have really, really did uh, justice to uh, to this topic they have covered uh, from how to develop idea and even how to promote your research after your publication i'm sure if we can uh, uh, go through what we have learned today i'm sure we have grabbed like one or two things that can really help us to uh, uh, how can i say to double our effort in trying to publish uh, our research so before we enter into the question and answers i would like to uh, like highlight some important key uh, point from today's webinar which is first uh, read the literature review they have emphasized on you have to read a literature review to be able to even identify a knowledge gap and then identify a key areas in your field you have to identify what is the trend in your in your in your field and then how are you going to get something out of that trend to publish a quality research and then the next is select good journal 
which you can publish for free, like the Tichutiabi mentioned, it's not necessarily always you have to give money to, to publish. There are several journals, high quality one, that you can publish actually for free, but your research has to be in good quality. Then uh, Dr. Ibrahim has uh, uh, highlight how to respond to reviewers, which he said you have to respond to them responsibly, try to address all their concerns that they have uh, given in their uh, uh, comment. And then finally, Dr. Mogoro have uh, shown us how to utilize social media for research activities and how to promote our, our research. Thank you very much, our, our presenters, and also thank you, uh, our audience, for sticking with us despite some glitches we have with time. Uh, we apologize for that, but we really appreciate your, uh, your time for being here with us. So now I think we'll address some few questions and then we can close the, uh, the session for today. So first, I would like to see who raised their hands first. Hamza Ibrahim, you can uh, ask your question. Please be brief. Hamza Ibrahim, if you are here. Okay. Yeah, um, thank you very much, sir. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm by name, I'm very, very from Botifed, Nigeria. So, uh, actually, what I have to say here is uh, just to appreciate what you did to us, despite it's like open heart surgery, actually, despite the fact that uh, Dr. Ibrahim Aliu was the first person that attacked me to get in and start writing. So, for now, actually, I'm seeing the impact of doing that. I'm um, always connecting with new people and learning new things, and today I've learned or learned other things. Okay, Th thank you, thank you very much for your comment. If you have a question, please, can you just go direct to the question? Yeah, my question, I think I will contact doctor personally because it will be a long way actually, and we're out of time. I understand that, 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 would, that would be great. Okay, thank you for your, for your comment, Hamza Ibrahim. Snusa Abdul Karim. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Uh, my question is uh, as regard to the journal that have been mentioned by one of my mentors, Dr. Chichemi. Mm -hmm. I learned that he mentioned almost four journals, uh, Taylor, Springer, and one other. But what about the Emerald and Science Direct? Because some people are saying that I don't know what, what, what are you going to say about this uh, uh, journal, Emerald and Science Direct. Thank you. Emerald and Science Direct. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Chitami, are you? Uh, thank you, Sanusi. Yeah, so as far as Science Direct is concerned, Science Direct is like a subsidiary of Elsevier. Yeah. So all the journals that are in Science Direct, they are part of Elsevier, yeah, which is Corpus in a way. So they are all acceptable, and even Emerald is an acceptable publisher. I only cited a few examples, but all of this, the only difference is Elsevier and uh, Springer, they make it relatively easier to find a journal by providing this uh, where you can put your abstract. I don't know like Emerald, I have not published in Emerald, but possibly they have similar platform, but they are all uh, reliable journals to publish. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Doctor Abdul Jalal Adam. <clears throat> Abdul Jalal Adam, if you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for giving me the, the opportunity. That, uh, uh, I'm Abdul Jalal Adam, and also I. Uh, my question is. Please, is pay print. Uh, can I put pay print in my pay print? Can I put it in yeah. my CV? Reprint. Okay. Um, may, may I respond? Okay, Ibrahim, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, yes, I think you can put it. It's like a uh, written manuscript, and uh, most of what they are looking for at some stages is that you've written the manuscript. They want to see. Uh, your style that you have the ability you know the process and so on so it's really important that's one of the function of the preprint is to make your research available before it goes through the rigorous review process so i think it's fine yes so to, and, and the second question is some journals 
they will say that you have to write a comment for each uh for each editor and his email and everything and i don't know where to find it so how can i go in this case sorry your question is not clear submission of article if i get you correctly you submit to the uh, the journal portal reviewer reviewer comments will come later on and uh, and it will be sent to your emails i but i don't get maybe if this answers your question i don't know yeah. No, sir, before I submitted the journal, they, they used to say that I should put uh, the, uh, the email and the comment for each editor. And I don't know where to find the editors. So no, uh, okay. I think what you mean is sometimes some, I don't know which journals you are talking about, but sometimes yeah, some, sir. what? Do you know, can you give us a name? Yeah, chemical papers in Springer. Springer. So I think they are asking you to recommend possible potential reviewers, right? So what they mean is you should look at from the virtual review you've done, those researchers that you are trying to improve their work or you rely on their uh, previous studies. So you just search the way they, some speakers have explained to you how to search on Google Scholar. When you put it, you see that paper, you click, then you go to maybe their their Google Scholar profile, then check the paper, you will see the right email to some of them. So that's where you get those names. You just search based on those guys you reference uh, or other experts in the field that you know through their works. So you just go there and search and get their emails from there. So what they ask you to do is not to, to send them, it's just to suggest. They just put them in the database. They may send it to them or not, but that's not your job. Mm. Okay, thank, thank you, thank you Dr. for addressing that. Mm. Let uh, me add one something quickly related okay. to the CV. You can do preprint. You can, if you have also in preparation, let's say you have you already started working on the paper. You type. You are in the process of writing, but not publish yet. You can put in your CV in preparation because that will, especially for students, that might be enough for some professors. Mm. Oh, that that that's very good point uh muhammad muhammad uh, uh good afternoon to you all thank you for giving me the opportunity uh my question is in related to uh i'm muhammad uh, mala from uv state uh, a medical student 300 level year uh so my question is that uh regarding, regarding publishing uh, as a student uh is, is it possible for me to have a supervisor which I'm not in. Uh, I'm not even in the MSc program to guide me to publish some journal. Mm, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, who would like Muhammad, to address that? Mm. Yes, fine. Uh, Muhammad. So what you can do is normally supervisors is like um, as part of your requirement, either a bachelor's degree, master's, or whatever. But what I will suggest for you is to get a mentor. So you don't have to wait until you finish. If you have any idea, you can get any academic or even a senior student or a master student and just tell him the idea to be your mentor, to guide you. You don't need to have a supervisor to conduct and publish the research. Okay, I'm not eligible to call, to publish. That is the no, answer. you are, you are. So you can publish okay. it without even a supervisor. Yeah. So all I so said is get a mentor to guide you so that because they have the practical so, so, experience. Thank you. May I have the mentor here, please, to guide me? Then? Yes. Please send an email to the emails uh, shared in the yeah. chat. Send it to gamgedu at gmail.com, then send your request, then we'll take it from there. Okay, my request are seeking for mentor. Send it to the email, not, not here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, no Dr. Dr. Muhammad Biello. Mm, thank you, Dr. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you, Dr. Dr. Yes, Buhari. Go ahead. All right, thank you. Um, my name is Dr. Um, Umar Muhammad Biello. I'm actually speaking from Glasgow. I'm a lecturer here in Glasgow Caledonian University. So I've actually joined the program for the first time to kind of um, listen to what's going on and then um, have a chance to say a big thank you to the guys that presented. I have a very good friend, Charlie Friedman, which you tell me, mm -hmm. and uh, so many other guys that presented. So it's um, just a comment to um, kind of thank whatever you guys are doing. It's really commendable and it's, uh, it's a very nice step forward. Um, thank you so much. Mm 
thank you very much, Doctor, for the wonderful comments. And uh, uh, maybe also, <laughs> Doctor, we would like you to uh, to join uh, Gamji also, so that we can all come together to keep uh, trying to contribute and help the younger ones. And then we will contact, inshallah, we'll take it from there. Thank you very much, Doctor, for the comments. Uh, yes, if I can just, um, you can drop actually. his email with you, then you get in touch with no just worries. Worry. Jay, he's, I, I have yeah, him. he's with Dr. Chuti. I so he's fine. <laughs> okay, okay. I will put him in. <laughs> yes. Uh, Ashur Abdullah. Ashur Abdullah. Okay, Musaddik Abbas Wada. Uh, thank you so much. Um, first of all, appreciations to the presenters for the scholarly uh, and knowledgeable presentation. Uh, my question goes to uh, Dr. Ibrahim Aliyu. Uh, please, uh, during uh, replying to the reviewers, in one of the questions you, you 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 shared, you mentioned that considering the blind review policy of some journals, like you were silent about mentioning your previous uh, publications. So please, I want to know uh, um, when when writing a, a manuscript, and maybe previously, to my understanding, maybe you have published several articles, and in your previous articles, you have highlighted the research gap. And in your new articles, you are trying to address the research gaps yourself, which means maybe while mentioning the problems or the research gap, you will still be citing your papers or maybe your mentor's paper. So will that have any implication to the acceptability of your current uh, manuscript? And then, apart from that, if please, if there is anything one needs to take care of uh, when submitting papers, maybe due to some policies like the blind review or something, uh, I would like to know. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for this uh, interesting question. So regarding the, as you uh, you are really observant, you notice the response. So what happened there was because we have previous experience during. Uh, other papers review process because when you submit in the reviewer process the first person that take uh, that checks as i explained is clerical staff or some admin guys what what if they have re blind review process one of the things they do is to quickly check whether you said in our previous work once they see that statement that means you have identified it is your paper so to avoid this kind of thing even if it is your paper you just don't say our don't identify as ours. You just said in the pre, in pre in a previous study, so you do not use ours. So the the review uh, blind review policy is maintained. But if you say our previous work, so regarding that you published, uh, maybe this, you raised some question in your previous article. I think this covers it. If you just say in 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 so so article this has been raised, you don't just mention it is yours. So because we do not say it is ours, he thought that we were basically repeating what that other guys were doing, not knowing it was us. So, but this journal, uh, fortunately for us, it was easier because uh, they, they don't have this blind review policy. So we were able to categorically tell him that it is actually our work. And the reason why we do not put it back is to avoid uh, the toy, uh, uh, violating some blind review process. I think, uh, and then you said, uh, your last question is, um, yeah, uh, like your last question is, what did you, so can you say it again? Yeah, it, yeah, I said, if there is any point, maybe or something someone should take care of, should be mindful of when submitting uh, a manuscript to a blind review journal or any journal. Yeah, yeah, so uh, the, the, the thing is just be neutral. Avoid saying our work for the first time. Just in previous studies, this has been established. You can reference it. That's one thing. So uh, this your question is why we were not mentioning it's our work, to avoid uh, this kind of thing. Secondly, give to the, uh, to the journal's uh, template. So one of the things people skip in submission is reading a uh, guide to guide to authors take your time and read that carefully why because not only that your paper may be returned to you it may create conflict between you and your supervisor because uh, if they send back rejected paper from that step like 
from clerical office. Some uh, some advisors might not be happy, and if it keeps repeating itself, they would think there is something you know. So you have to read that guide. Make sure you follow their style, their template, how you submit, what you should put, blind review process, and so on. Just check that carefully. Otherwise, uh, it will always be returned to you. So that, I think that's what you should uh, take care, uh, take note of. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. You are muted. No, I just said thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, no, Buhari, I mean, Dr. Buhari. Buhari, yeah. Buhari, 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 Buhari. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Abbasani, sorry. <laughs> OK, so good afternoon, sir. We really appreciate your efforts in hosting this space. Um, my question is about uh, uh, mentorship. As Muhammad Muhammad has already asked before, um, we really lack mentorship here in our site, and I, it's really affecting our academic life because I have gained a lot. I have an insight from what we have uh, really acquired from your input right, right now. Okay, my question here is like for me, I'm a undergraduate student, sorry, a postgraduate student doing my master's at Bayer University, you know, in the Department of Computer Science, and I have a challenge. My challenge is like I have an interest, a keen interest in artificial intelligence, and I have been working for my research work on something. But uh, when I presented it to my supervisor, he has no any interest in artificial intelligence. He was telling me this is a new trend, blah, 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 blah. He just couldn't do it. So he just changed my interest from AI to like some mathematical aspect of research, giving me some algorithm because he is good with math, you know, all those all, all people. So like I was down really down i don't know what to do because my interest in is all about ai so i don't know what to do really so maybe from you i can get some insight on how to cope about this situation and so thank you very much mm. thank, thank you very much okay I think uh, for this question maybe dr uh, ibrahim and then later yeah. maybe i would like dr abba ramadan also to yeah. say some few things on this uh, yeah. dr ibrahim Ali. Uh, yeah so uh the garden where he's pushing you yeah, sometimes really, the, if you say AI is about neural network, deep learning, you just go in there, set up some network, train, and you have results. Sometimes it's really hard to, oh, it's a big problem in the domain, they call it explainable AI. How do you explain these results? You have no idea. So sometimes going back through the mathematics uh, helps you to really bring out novelty and leads to good publication. But really, like the AI, just training and getting results is much more easier than going through that boring mathematics but that's where your contribution lies so uh the algorithms he is asking you to go through maybe optimization algorithm and so on yes there are algorithms that the the, the learning you are seeing is really based on mathematical framework i know the table will talk more on that so either way you can train this uh, where he's taking you to is about if it is about learning and the algorithms they are really important because the ai you are saying is also an algorithm it's just neural network with feedback loop and so on and just training so at the end that that mathematics is taking you through is to really open your eyes what really happened so many data scientists can train today but have no understanding of the math but if you are able to go through those mathematics, uh, Dr. Abba will explain better. I think, let me allow him to come in at this point. Uh, Dr. Abba, in few words, <laughs> how to avoid this kind of uh, supervisor student conflict in terms of research interest? Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for the question. Also, thank you, uh, Dr. Ibrahim, for uh, clearing that a little bit. So, yes, so there are two things involved here. The first one is, um, there's a conflict between the interest between what the student thinks they want to do and what the advisor is going after and to be specific there is a question of i want to do the ai training of the model whereas i oh, the advisor i want to do the mathematics so related to the student uh, if what you are doing you okay this is very big if you think you know a lot of what the question are, what the, the, the 
to, to the research you are trying to do in the data, whatever, you are very vast in it and you think the train is going too fast that your advisor is lacking. Okay, you can start do the work, right? Okay, go and do the algorithm, do the run the data, have the model. I'm presenting to your advisor. In general, he might be impressed and say, oh, okay, I see what you are saying. Let's go in that direction. So that could fix that. Or you can reach, let's say, even at that point, still it did not fix it. And you are still very convinced with whatever you are doing. You can reach out to other people in the area and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. I presented to my, somebody else. At that moment, don't say advisor because you don't want to. You don't know me. They might be friends. And then if that person say, oh, this is actually brilliant. This is nice. Then you might have a mentor, as Dr. Twitter and you say, and you can connect and continue that way. But you might actually get similar re response from them and say, oh, by the way, your advisor is right. This is not actually the way to go. And speaking of the mathematics, right, these days it's very easy. There are a lot of softwares that you can just plug in and they will do the data analysis for you and you will do everything. But the way you advance science, especially in machine learning, these days people really focus on the mathematics. Do you really understand what is going on? Like, how good is your linear algebra? How good is your calculus? How good is your optimization? If these are not good, forget about the paper you present. Like this, this just give me any data. I have softwares I can put it in. It can write the paper, quote unquote data analysis for me. And that is no more a very interesting. Even chat GPT can do some of this. So that's why maybe the advisor know what they are saying by telling you, hey, let's focus on the mathematical algorithm because that is where we can make a bigger impact, a bigger contribution than mm -hmm. a just normal paper that might not be even up to the standard for a good mm -hmm. journal. I hope this answered this, uh, the thank, question. Thank, thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, still, we have a few questions. Okay, Usman Garwa Abdu, then after that, Nazi Pisali, then Abdul Qadir, then We'll cross for today. Usman Garwa Abdu, if you here, please, can you be brief and uh, ask your question? Okay, Usman Garwa Abdu is not here. Nazi Pisali. Yes, thank you so much for giving me the chance to ask a question. Uh, my name is Nazi Pisali. I currently doing my master's in here in India, Kalinga University, and I have a plan to apply for PhD scholarship after my the completion of my master's here. So I currently uh, have finished my manuscript, just about to submit to a journal. Somebody uh, advised me to go for the arch, that is a uh, directorate of uh, for open access journals. So I was wondering whether that the arch is uh, like advisable for me to put my journal there, my article there, or what advice can you please uh, give to me now? as somebody who is looking for PhD scholarship. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Megoro, would you like to address that? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I got the question completely. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, I'm not sure if I get. Can I repeat? Uh, if you can you repeat? Dr. Ibrahim. Can I repeat the question? No, I, I okay. It's okay, I, it's okay. okay Brian, so, go ahead. All right. Uh, I think uh, if you re can remember, uh, Dr. Chutiami has taken some time and Dr. Megoro to explain how to search this uh, databases. So, whatever someone said to you, you take a look at it through the schemago and how he has demonstrate to you. That is where you can confirm if the journal he is saying is in Scopus Index is SCA, SCI index, is in Web of Science and so on. You need to just check this. Sometimes the journal can be somewhere, but it's not indexed yet. Like the, uh, even in uh, in Scopus, their paper goes to Scopus most likely, but they are not SCI index. So you can see like in Korea here, they in, interested in SCI index. So sometimes you find some new Scopus journals that have not yet qualified or have not yet, yet uh, 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 they have not yet been indexed in science. So you need to check this web of science, then check the scopus. 
So if the journal someone mentioned to you is there, then you know it's a good journal. If it's not in these two databases that we are familiar with, so you know what to do. Mm, okay, so I think that's uh, that's all about the question. Then that uh, I am back, there, so. do, Okay, please uh, ask your question quickly. All right, so thank you so much. From you, you are the last thank one. I think. All right, thank you so much all for the excellent presentation. We really learn a lot. My own is not a question; it's a request actually. If possible, I would like to for you to organize another session for us regarding the minor secret writing. Practically, like uh, by Dr. Chiamino, we want to like, learn a lot regarding that aspect. And it was rushed, actually, and indexing. Because I, I, mean, I have like MSc, I'm currently trying to pursue my PhD in United Kingdom. And actually, I'm liking by regarding the manuscript writing. Thank you so much, all. Okay, thank you very much. Inshallah, we will look into this request and we'll see how we can uh, organize a webinar based on that um, uh, your request. And not even that, maybe some of the or part, some of the uh, lectures or presentation today, maybe we will have to break them down to do them uh, separately. But. Uh, uh, thank you very much inshallah we will try to see how we can do that uh, i see still hands raising but i think we have to end it now sorry guys uh, uh here we comes to the end of the 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 session uh, i would like to thank our wonderful uh, uh researchers that have uh, uh, given us their time today to share this wonderful uh, presentation. I'm sure uh, we have all learned a lot from uh, their presentation and we have understand uh, how to uh, develop a uh, research idea until how to even uh, uh, promote our publication uh, in social media. So I hope we have learned one or two things and we will try to uh, apply them in our research. And then I would like to thank our audience also for uh, having the time to join us and listen to, uh, to, to us. Thank you very much and we really uh, appreciate and we apologize for the delay of the time. We are far ahead of our scheduled time, but I'm sure uh, it is worth it. So thank you very much uh, once again. If you have any requests, that you want to send to gamji i already shared the our gmail address that is gamji at edu.com you can send any kind of request and inshallah we'll try to uh, respond to that and also for the recording of this video is going to be available in our youtube channel gamji educational and mentorship forum and also we will share the links in our social media such as facebook twitter and uh, uh yeah and instagram Thank you very much uh, uh, once again, and here we come to the end of the uh, meeting.